Hello, welcome to Enox Engineering, I'm Alan. In today's video we start making the indexing ring and the feed screw for the drill grinder jig. The feed screw has about a 5mm feed and uses a 6mm cap head. The indexing ring has 12 holes. Why 12 holes? That's because 12 holes are divisible by 2, 3, 4 and 6. So if you have a 3 fluted drill it's no problem. But first we need to find a way of making the 12 holes for the indexing ring. So let's go into the workshop. Making an indexing strip. Take a sheet of A4 paper and draw a line across. Cut the paper so that the line is in the middle of the strip. Take the lid that you wish to use and then tape the paper strip to the edge of the rim. Mark where the two pieces meet and cut the paper strip so it's the exact length to the rim. Remove the paper and tape it to another piece of paper. With a square draw a line any length and divide that line into the number of indexing positions you need, in this case 12. Once you've drawn the 12 lines, mark the last line to the beginning of the strip. Then keeping that line parallel to the first line, slide along and mark the other 12 positions for your indexing strip. Once you've marked the 12 lines, number the 12 lines and remove the strip from the paper. Fix the strip to the rim of the lid and there you have your indexing reference. Put the lid in the lathe chuck and drill a hole for size to suit a nut and bolt that you have. I've put a bolt through it, M6, which can now go in the collet. So all I need is to get something to eye this up level. Then I can turn this round and mark off the div divisions. Now I've fitted a magnetic stand here with a screwdriver blade in which is just touching the paper to give me a date and point. And here's the finished indexing ring. I've turned this piece of steel down to 12mm and I've drilled a 5mm hole in the end and now I'm putting a knurl on this end. <laughs> Ensure this face is parallel and part this off with the whip to fit inside the dividing ring. I'm just taking the corner off that now. Here's the feed screw fitted with a 6mm cap head. I've cut two, well, I've got two blocks of steel, they're 35mm long, 25mm wide and about 15mm 
what I'm doing is facing it off, putting a 45 degree chamfer on. And on this one, I faced it off, putting the chamfer on. But I want the chamfer this way to blend in with a one inch diameter. Now why I'm doing that is just looking down a one inch bar. This radius on the chamfer, roughly the one inch. I've set the compound slide at 45 degrees. So if you hold that one inch bar on top of the chuck jewel, roughly a one inch diameter, it's not critical. I want to score a line down the middle of this as a datum line. Now I've put a thread cutting tool on its side, set the center of the tool or the tip of the tool to the centre line by adjusting the tool holder up or down. Set this square by using the jaw just to look and I'm going to put a scratch mark that and see there the mark. If it's out of the line or it doesn't look right you can always machine a bit more off the taper and try again. I've just marked out the position on the centre line which is the distance from the base to the middle where your index pin will be which is 17.7. I'm drilling a 7.5 mil hole each side of the centre line for the indexing pin this is just to remove material so um, I haven't got so much to take out when I start the milling. This is the block I'm machining. I've put two parallel strips on the top of the compound slide. A washer there to bring the centre of those holes onto the centre line of the chuck. The other packing piece I've got here has got a washer on and the opposite side of that a piece of aluminium on the top and I'm clamping it down using the tool post bolt and I'm just clocking up the front face to get that parallel to for the start of milling each division on there is a tenth so now that's done 8 mil milling cutter in the chuck start to cut thing I want to do is swap the cutter from an 8 to 10 and then go in 7.5mm half halfway down the block and enlarge this end. Fifteen point six. Need that down to twelve.
Okay, that slides in and out easy. And the next thing I need to do is put a flat on the top and the bottom of about a millimetre. The side that's got no teeth up against that. I want to just file a flat across there. a bit more on the depth. Just going to drill four millimeter hole straight through that. I've just lighted it off and turned it round in the chuck. I'm just facing up this end. Actually fit in the block, move side to side. And we're making the indexing screw. I've fitted my knurling tool, I've brought the speed. Just going to put a chamfer on the top edge there. Now the next thing I want to do is machine a 60 degree point on the the front and then cut the thread. So to do that I need to put my compound slide over to 30. Check that it fits in one of the holes. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not going to put a parallel piece on the end because if anything it'll get snapped off. I've got an M5 die. This is just a Morse taper with a parallel shank on it. The back of this fits on the parallel shank. It's free to move up and down, in and out and round. I'm just going to put the die on the end. I've got my mandrel fitted in the headstock. So I can turn the headstock with a spanner on the other side.
piece of brass with a thread in. This is so I don't have to use, grip this on the jaws to face this off. There's a screw for the indexing pin. This is the feed screw, has a feed of about 5mm. This is the indexing ring with the 12 positions and this is the indexing lock. So the way this works is you select your position you want, you can undo the screw here and it will rotate. Select which position you want and tighten the screw. You don't need to tighten it tight and on this side you can wind the feed in and if you notice on this side the indexing screw travels along the slot that you made in the, the block but it won't turn. So all that I need to do now on this is to mark the positions of the in, of the hole so you can see from the end which one is engaged and mark some positions on here. So once you've ground the drill on the one side you can see where it is, back it off, rotate it and then feed it back into the same position. Oh well, that's it for today and we'll finish off this project next time on Enots Engineering.